Hey everyone, my name is Austin, and after fucking up and just trying to like finish my installation, uh, I finally installed Gen 2, although with a little bit of issues in my first Gen 2 video. And then in my second Gen 2 video, I told you guys about how I bricked my system, I fucked up my system doing some like ricing, and also I did not mention this in my fucking Gen 2 video about me fucking everything up. Ironically enough, me trying to set up like a, like a backup tool or something so that way I can like recover stuff, that ended up fucking my entire system up. And so I ended up having to reinstall everything again and having a lot of trouble with the damn bootloader. Yeah, fuck you system deboot. Terrible. Grub is so good. Anyway, enough of that. We're back with the Gen 2. We're back and the system is nice and clean now. So now that everyone's catched up with the lore, let's talk about my full experience experience with installing Gen 2. Starting off with the specifications, what kind of, you know, process I used for installing my type of Gen 2, and talking about my experience with Portage. Gen 2's package manager, right? Because I feel like that encapsulates the full Gen 2 experience. So obviously anyone who plans on using Gen 2 or anyone who's currently using Gen 2, the Gen 2 AMD 64 handbook and the overall wiki, the Gen 2 wiki, is a great resource and is a must use. And so for this video, I'm going to base my experiences off this particular handbook. I'm not gonna care, I'm not gonna cover every little thing, but I will cover most things. Uh, uh, on here. So let's just start with the very beginning about the Gen 2 installation. This one, I believe, just talks about Gen 2 Linux and like how to install Gen 2 Linux, the philosophy of you know, installing Linux. This one talks about choosing the right installation medium. I think talking about like, you know, using like CDs, USBs, how to like, you know, boot and shit like that. Uh, for me, uh, I used Ventoy uh, USB to set it up. I, like most people are gonna like use like Rufus or some shit like that on a USB. Maybe some people use CDs or something. I don't know. Th th that's what basically, that's what it talks about here. Uh, and then it says like configuring the, the network. Oh yeah, I guess this one also talks about like, uh, like getting the right ISO, right? get in the right ISO. The Gen 2, I think, the handbook uses the, the Gen 2 ISO, but you can use any Linux ISO to install Gen 2, which is actually pretty cool. I use the Linux Mint ISO for this because it's a live ISO, it's GUI based, and it makes it makes these steps much, much easier. If you use the uh, minimal live image provided by uh, the Gen 2 team, you're gonna have to do extra steps. But at the very least, the handbook does cover that because it is assuming that you're using the live image. Same thing with configuring the network. Like my first Gen 2 installation, I did like part way into like configure the network and all that. But then I realized if I just used Linux Mint, like the ISO for Linux Mint, I can just skip these first three steps pretty much. So I just restarted my Gen 2 installation and I just jumped to preparing the disk. And so preparing the disk, I followed most of the steps here and I used, uh, what is it, CF disk instead of like F disk or G disk or whatever the fuck they mentioned up here. That was like about it. Uh, I specified you. Uh, UEFI instead of BIOS. You got to make sure to do that because I did not know which one I was on at first. I was on BIOS, but I set up most of my installation for UEFI and I completely fucked up. I completely fucked up everything. Uh, and I had to do my Gen 2 installation over and over and over again. And that's the theme of this video. The theme of this video is I fucked up so many times with my Gen 2 uh, experience with my Gen 2 installation and, you know, figuring out all these damn packages and portage and all that that uh it's like my knowledge now is based on trial and error the handbook is nice the wiki is nice but trial and error i finally figured out my configuration but whatever that's we're getting ahead of ourselves here so i set up like cf disk i you know i set up my partitioning table i think it's like um something about legacy bi bios partition table or like gbt partitioning table uh let me see so the partitioning scheme so you have to make sure this is very important very very important i also fucked up here uh my first time with my installation you got to use the GPT disk and the MBR partitioning table disk for legacy firmware. That's very important. That's also something that I also fucked up as well. You know, pretty simple. This one was about, uh, what is it? You download it from the, from the, from the download page, right? From the command line. And then you extract it. And then, you know, you'd like change your, uh, like make.com.
con for portage and then uh, you just move on um not, not 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 too much like variation with installing the the bare minimum installation files this this part is not too interesting to talk about but the base system ch rooting into this uh preparing for the bootloader choosing which type of bootloader i wanted i initially went with system d boot but honestly that shit is so fucking garbage i, I did like three runs right where i picked system d boot three runs of this shit three runs i don't like system d boot i don't like it i don't like it grub is so much easier it's so much intuitive it's so much better i i, I tried three fucking separate installation times right three separate times but i, ca I could never get it to fucking work properly like it just it just could not build me a goddamn bootloader entry it's just stupid and then i had to manually build build it myself and like i was scared that like it might not fucking work the next fucking kernel update or some shit and just choosing a profile configuring portage uh i i did add the binary package host i didn't touch the use variable thing but i think that's just like updating it in your make.com file and then you know it's basically teaching you how to use it for like separate packages or packages or something like that and i use system d instead of open rc that's very important for me because uh well somewhere around here somewhere around here it, it tells you like what what do, what do you want like uh, you want to open rc type of system manager service manager type shit or or system d i just chose system d instead of open rc you know, that, that's 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 what i asked what i chose because i'm familiar with system d and yeah like i i have no reason to change to open rc but i'm willing to give it a shot in the future for now, we're going with the basic bitch ass, uh, system D grub, like the basic bitch ass stuff, like with the distribution kernel instead of a, uh, making the kernel from scratch. I just chose the distribution kernel because like I said, I didn't feel like... I didn't feel like I needed to make the kernel. I just, you know, I, I did compile the distribution kernel from scratch. I did. Uh, but that was terrible. That was a terrible experience. That took fucking forever. Uh, especially on my fucking 14 year old ThinkPad, bro. No, it's just absolutely fucking not. So my second, third time, fourth time fucking installing Gen 2, uh, I just used the fucking, you know, binary version. And that saved me so much more fucking time, honestly. And that should be everything. I should, I probably talked about most fucking things. Uh, so Installing the tool, system D just has everything. So this is basically more for like open RC and set and same for setting up the network and stuff. Like you open RC, you gotta do more work on the back end. System D gang for life, probably. You know what I mean? Unless I'm feeling a little like bored, probably gonna stick to using system D. And then yeah, that's pretty much it for the installation. Uh I did talk about my overall experience in my first Gen 2 video, but this time we're going into like the bare like bones. We're talking about every little fucking detail here so yeah so now let's talk about the overall user experience like installing packages updating your system maintaining your system you know etc etc and for this portion of the video i'm going to compare my experiences with arch linux that's how this video is going to be structured so let's start with installing a package for example right let's do for example moonlight so on arch which uses pacman the most i would do is just sudo pacman and attack capital S and then moonlight right and you know if I want to be careful with like getting the exact name or whatever I'm just gonna put moonlight arch right moonlight arch come up here and just get the name moonlight qt okay cool right is there a wiki for this I, I would type arch wiki right if i want to know more about moonlight so you know i I'd probably take a look at this shit or something like i don't know it's, it's not that it's not that big of a deal but when using gen 2 you're gonna always probably gonna need that documentation right so for example you gotta go with moonlight Gen 2. Obviously, you want to, you know, get the proper name to type into your terminal, blah, 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 blah. But also for the use flags, right? Also for the use flags. You need, like, the wiki and, like, the, like, proper package name for Gen 2. Like, for, like, 100% of the time. You're going to always need to pull it up whenever you're installing packages. With Arch Linux, you can just raw dog it, right? If, like, if you know the name, you can just raw dog it like 50% of the time, 80% of the time, very little like, you know, reading the wiki for like how to set things up or whatever. But for Gen 2, you you, ha you have to, you got to pull it up, look at the, look at the goddamn, uh, you know, use flags for this, which are basically just like uh, little toggles pretty much 
that you can like put into this like file. The cool thing is Etsy Portage package.use and then you know you make a file with the name of the package right with the name of the package as the name of the file you basically use these like use flags as toggles to pick the parts of the package that you want and the parts that you don't which is why it's always mandatory for you to like pull up extra references extra documentation in order to make sure that you know you're installing the proper package and we haven't even talked about like the global use flags which infect the entire system etc etc so basically Portage has a lot of customization compared to something like Pac-Man, for example, right? Which just, you know, installs from the repos and all that. Uh, Portage compiles like everything from source unless you like toggle that you know bin host when you're like setting up gen 2 and all that in which case it will try to grab as many like binary packages you know to help with the you know compile process or if you're installing just a binary package it can do that as well but for the most part portage is very source heavy right like you're, you're compiling most things from source which depending on the hardware is gonna take relatively like fast to like relatively slow on my end it's extremely fucking slow but well <laughs> what can you do and don't even get me started with those system updates it's nasty dude very nasty those system updates can take a very long time very very long time very a lot of trauma when i like like did a bunch of system updates uh when installing gen 2 so going a little more into portage it also takes more steps to like uh, deal with packages as well like syncing up to like the main repo and like you know installing all that install all the good stuff right that's like a two-stepper and same with like removing packages and you know getting getting them off your system you know you gotta deselect it from your system and then you can remove it you know arch is just one command portage you gotta do it in multiple other than that like portage is not bad in fact i really like portage especially for the whole use flags thing but you know that's a bit of a trade-off you know you gotta do more steps in order to make portage work for you but if you're committed to configuring and tinkering around you're gonna enjoy portage i feel like and funny enough that can pretty much sum up the entire gen 2 experience that is if you're willing to put in the time if you're willing to go through a lot of trial and error and I, I gotta emphasize, if you do have a lot of time, I think Gen 2 can be one of the most rewarding and the most interesting distributions to look at. And it definitely, like, it definitely can be very fun. Like, just watching it compile and shit like that. For me, though, it sometimes gets a little bit tedious because, like I said, I'm running this shit on old hardware. And so sometimes it does get a little bit annoying. But a lot of the times, I do just enjoy letting my computer just waste fucking energy and, you know, let it compile shit you know what i mean like <laughs> the life of uh the unemployed student i mean not really because i have a job over the summer but so so once you know college hits you know college plus job maybe we'll see how i deal with gen 2 but i have a lot of time to spare during the summer so gen 2 is a great operating system for that but maybe once i have like responsibilities and jobs to do with my fucking laptop i'm not gonna have time to just let it compile for like fucking two to three hours a day you know every fucking day you know what i mean i'm exaggerating but not really especially when the especially for those system updates it takes fucking forever bro